against Missouri. So many people playing right now. It's great. All right, so against Zuri, we're playing all the cards except for Pummels and Unmovable. Um, we are going to be playing Hammer and all the other stuff. Let's play a good efficiency grind game. I am not huge on doing anything like super crazy on turn one. Honestly, it might just be Arsenal Zealous. Like, attack with hammer, Arsenal Zealous. They're playing extra cards too. This could go to fatigue. You can fatigue by pressure in this matchup. So. Okay, already getting two cards. When do you bring in Titan's Fist? It's basically only for Lexi. Uh, also Leviah. Leviah can just like throw crazy amounts of damage as everybody knows. Uh, this hand is a Bravo hand. So, yeah. Um, it might be a block out turn. Might be something. Okay, well, yep. This is uh, assuredly a block out turn probably. <laughs> this is not looking good. I don't want to get rid of all these cards, but like, I mean, we get shred and then the the cut to the chase or whatever it's called. I, I feel like you just have to like play this as if it's a Dory card. They're probably like, oh my God, he's blocking it out. It's crazy because they shred me here. I'm still blocking for five, which is good. Well, they still have the shred. Theoretical shred. And life. Yes. Okay, uh, this hand is not terrible. It's probably just a block with a choke slam. It is no longer block with choke slam unless we have to. Probably block with some armor. The attack with nerve scapel, that's kind of annoying. Surgical extraction. Okay, they are attacking with Nerve Scalpel. There's the Shred. So we got to worry about... Worry about the Shred. If they're playing Surgical, it kind of ruins our hand. I'm going to end up blocking here and here, I think. They do end up playing the Shred. You block with the Tech Plating as well. If they hit the Crater Fist, then you're just kind of fucked. So that you're hitting one of the cards, then I'm able to play the sink below, and then we can come back with a zealous belting into a hammer. Give and go again, sure. Now we're gonna play that. So we played around it. It's good stuff. Heard Azori compared to Warrior many times. I do think there's like situations in the game where it's very, very much like Dory. Where you just kind of have to do this overblock thing just in case. But if you play like an isolate or something like that, that's where it gets tricky for me. It's just like, oh man, like do I block this isolate with my greater fist? If I do, I might get it blown up. It's like, eh. Hit him for six. 11 damage turn with uh, three cards. Love to see it. Okay, yeah, they're seeing all the D reacts. We already saw one pitch though, so we won't have to worry about that until second cycle. I'll prioritize putting this unmovable in Arsenal, I think. It's playing a little bit more defensively. If this is for seven, it's not. I'm gonna block with one card. One to the poor. Um, they're probably not gonna like flicknize me or anything like that. It's one or less here. They could mask me if they wanted to. I don't think the on hits like super, like super matters here. So we might as well just like take the one. Okay, they are not reacting. They got rid of Starstruck. Not the best, but not the worst. At least it's not more silver for them.
Missouri is pretty cool. I've thought many times about playing her. Uh, Hurl is just damage, so I don't usually block those. They're never going to like use those to throw a dagger. I'm not going to block this one either. We'll see what they play. I'm kind of saving this for their last card, just in case it's something like a Leave No Witnesses or, or an Eradicate or Codex here, right? That's pretty good. What do they get? Probably Plunder. Surgical, sure. I think I'm just going to give two cards. They fling the dagger, that's bad. Oops. We'll give them these two, just in case they do try to fling the dagger. That'd be kind of annoying. You can still swing four, game three. Actually, it's swing three because of the frailty. Unless one more frailty gone. And with these uh, contract Azuri list, it looks like it's more contract focused. They usually play some remembrance as well, so we got to look out for that. Um, here, I don't really want to block with the blue. I also don't really want to block with the starstruck, because I can save that for a second cycle push. D-React is obviously very good. It might just be take this, use that, replace. I'm going to do that. So you have a couple of options depending on how the hand plays out. I'm going to take this one too. Okay, for seven, draw a card. Okay. Continuing to make this awkward for me. It's pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to use the D-React here, pitching this. Make a surge, swing four, Arsenal Fate for scene. Prepare for next turn. They just had a really go wide turn right there. Was it E-Strike into Pearl into E-Strike? Okay, sounds pretty good. Very, very go wide right now. Man, that's strong. I feel like we just have to take this stuff. Because surely they're going to be attacking with a little bit more. It's so awkward. I mean, we know it's something, something annoying, right? Yeah. I'll go ahead and use this. We'll bottom. We want to see some other cards. Okay. And we're playing the efficiency game. Trying to get as many cards out of them as possible. To be react. It's probably just be an arsenal pass. Yeah, look at that. Crazy. It's like I played this deck. I'll keep the showtime in hand. I was actually thinking about pitching it, like over pitching with Bravo, just to see some other cards. 
But this card is like almost always a three block. Or it is almost. Or definitely a three block against these daggers specifically. Look at all these three blocks. Guaranteed. Guaranteed three block. Take it. Long hair, don't care. Uh, yeah, we'll give you the card that is actual doo doo. Now, the question is I think, yeah, we kind of have to do, we're forced into playing this in case it's a CNC. Okay. We'll top that. I actually do like the D React here. Okay. No! <laughs> no! Not my D-React! Another one. Okay. So they're milling. Milling hard. Mask. No. It's an additional one, right? Yeah. It just gets one more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so... That, I mean, that's annoying, but... I mean, I guess it could have been worse. Eh, we're here. Still ahead on card count. So I think that's the last cut to the chase. No, they have one more. Uh, give me a full crush block leaking to you. I almost want to just like block block on here. So they are burning a lot of cards out of me. Making a surge is probably important. I think I'm going to do that. Maybe it, it might be worth just doing it this too. I mean, they're not flinging their other dagger. That's like crazy if they do. And then we'll arsenal this. Also threatens Pummel. It's always a Pummel threat. That's why I like this card too. One of the many reasons that I like this card. Paper scene. That is one, two, three. Other sink below. It's probably coming up. Frailty trap. Doesn't have go again, so that actually doesn't do anything. Okay. Well, this hand is pretty mid. But we take this block with our warmongers. Probably zero for four. Zero for five. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um. Yeah. I mean, they can they can contract that. That's fine. Don't be something good. Oh, uh, macho. No. That's okay. Discard two cards, please. Got them. These games are pretty fun. I like the games that are a little bit longer. That's why I played Oldham. I just love playing the game so much that I forced my opponent to play it longer with me. Ugh. Just kidding. Just kidding. The latest iteration of Oldham was probably my favorite, though. The one that played Anathos. It was just... I called him Br Grumpy Bravo because he's an old man. And, uh, yeah. It was fun. It was fun. I liked it a lot. Playing Vambrace and Anathos. It's pretty cool. A lot of people actually disliked it a lot. And, uh, I mean, to each their own, right? But I had a ball playing that. Okay, they're getting Death Touch here. So that means that we are block blocking. Right? Right. 
Yes, that is the case. Lay Ponder. Codex of Frailty is so good. This card should be an assassin only card. Is that a hot tech? Take the ranger off. Who needs the books? Okay, uh, of course it was Death Touch. Card's great. Block, block. Flick your your spiders by. Do it. Do it. They didn't do it, chat. Swing for five. This is my romping club. So we haven't seen a remembrance. We have not. Hey, D reacts. I love D reacts. Ooh, boy. Um. Here. It's probably worth giving them armor like this in here. I think that's right. Because we want to play around CNC. If it's not a CNC, then we can actually use this D-React. That's fine. And we get to play our own CNC next turn. Which is probably a big deal based on the way we block. They don't usually like to react in this situation. So, okay. That's fine with me. They are shredding. So they're getting rid of the showtime. Okay. Okay, it's an Annihilate the Armed. And a cut to the chase. We get to look at the top. Left the card on top. Um, We're still going to take the damage. So we'll just leave it as is. It's pretty good. Our CNC doesn't do anything, but at least stops their uh, their last E react that they likely have. They play a couple, right? So they probably have a frailty and a paper scene in their hands. We can kind of deduce that. One of the two. Okay, this hand's good. Yes, sir. We will take. Okay, there's the last codex. It's good to know about. So that means that they have something. They have to have something in their hand that we want to block if they're pitching a codex. Right. So there it is. I think we have to block with this here. Because we don't want to block with this. We're going to keep these two cards in our hand. What's the last card? What could it be? Uh, CNC is still an option. We only saw one pitched, I want to say. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll bottom that. This card that is not great. So there's CNC. Now we can be a little more crazy with this sink below because we know it's probably not going to be a CNC. I think we got a little while before we see the other one. Don't know the exact track and where that's at, but it was pitched decently early if I remember. But I don't think it's this hand. Okay. So there's this last vapor scene most likely. Maybe a frailty trap on top of that. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. How'd I know? 
I'm very tempted to do literally nothing against them this turn. Like, don't care. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you can banish the dagger. That's neat. Scholars. Slay the scholars. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll use the D-React. That's fine. How many D-Reacts do I have? I probably should have checked that before I just started throwing it. We have one. Okay, we, we probably have one coming up, so I feel good about that. Do do do. Seven, go again. Not gonna arsenal either of these. Okay, that's the last sink below. We saw that pitched earlier next to, I think it was an eradicate. They have an eradicate in their hand. But they're assuredly blocking this turn anyway. You have to give me one more card. Cut to the chase. One, two, three. We don't have to worry about that combo with the eradicate anymore. Leave no. They blocked with annihilate and then leave no. Okay. Going down to two, baby. Down to two. Bravo favored or Azuri favored. It, like almost every other matchup, it is very, very skill dependent. Very. Okay, so this is Annihilate the Armed. We know that. They don't have any more reacts available. So we just kind of win if we do this. So we'll block with the Starstruck and just play the Mato. But I do think it's Bravo favored, just being on this side of the table and playing it many, many times. Um, the daggers are starting to get pretty scary. Like that, they could always have the ability to like flick a knife if we're at one. We don't have any more sigils. We're done with those. But I think they're just dead next turn. I don't want to just assume, but they are probably just dead. If we take three here, we go to three. They don't have any way to deal additional damage. That's fine. Yeah, there's a lot of combat tricks you have to play around with. Um, down to two. Yeah, see? There's that flick knife. This should be the game. It's very close. But yeah, I think it's super close. Like... I've heard people say that it's more like 70-30 in Bravo's favor. I don't think it's that crazy. Especially with a list like this. I think it's probably more along the lines of 60-40, maybe 55-45. Like, it's it's pretty dang close. And um, a good Azuri against, like, a, a pretty novice Bravo, I think they get there almost every time. Just because the game goes so long, right? Gives the Bravo more opportunities to uh, make a mistake. That's the thing with Dory, too, right? Like, you think about Dory. Go ahead and add a win to the tally mark. 